Okay, well at this point I think we've made a lot of progress on the topic of knowing how to determine whether a molecule is aromatic or not aromatic. And you should be able to handle just about any example uh, that gets thrown at you. Uh, so if you want to, you can kind of stop watching the videos right here. Uh, but I, I want to go on to, to talk uh, about a little bit more. Uh, all, the, all the videos so far, I've been basically just covering the rules without explaining why they work. Uh, so for example, we've talked about the fact that in order to be aromatic, you've got to be uh, flat. Uh, but we haven't said why it matters that you're flat. Uh, and we've talked about how you have to be completely conjugated, but we haven't said why it matters that the molecule is completely conjugated. And we've talked about um, the idea that an aromatic compound has 4n plus 2 pi electrons, but we haven't said why that makes a molecule aromatic. Uh, we haven't talked about all of that because you don't really need to understand all the rules to get uh, most of the problems right that you're likely uh, to see. Uh, on the other hand, if you're taking uh, a really rigorous uh, OCHEM class, it actually will be to your benefit to have a deeper understanding of uh, where these rules are coming from. So I'd like to cover that. Uh, also, perhaps you might just be interested uh, in where the rules are coming from. So again, this part of the video might be helpful uh, to you. Um, but uh, as I said, if you're in a hurry and you just want to know how to get uh, regular questions right, it's not necessary to watch uh, what we're going to talk about right now. Okay, so now let's go on and try to get a deeper understanding of the things that we've been talking about. Let's start with this me uh, molecule of ethene, or as it would usually be called, uh, acetylene. Now, let's try drawing a little bit more what the orbitals look like around the carbons here. Uh, what's the hybridization of the carbons? Both of these carbons are sp2, hybridized carbons. And now let let's talk about another topic that we haven't talked about much today, which is molecular geometry. So I'm sure you're familiar with the terms trigonal planar, tetrahedral, linear. In OCHEM it's oftentimes important to be able to tell what the geometry is of a molecule that you're looking at. So what is the molecular geometry of uh, an sp2 atom? Uh, well, sp2 atoms are pretty much always trigonal planar. Uh, maybe there's uh, one kind of minor exception to that, but we, we, won't, we won't talk about that. Uh, for the most part, anything that's sp2 is going to be trigonal planar. Okay, so again, this molecule is supposed to represent uh, ethene or acetylene. Uh, but now we're going to try to show the geometry a little bit more realistically. Now, I've only shown one bond between the two carbons, uh, but this is still supposed to be ethene. I'm, I'll explain in a second why I haven't shown the other bond. Uh, now, remember that we just said that since this is sp2, it should be trigonal planar. And that's the way I've drawn this carbon as a trigonal planar. Uh, so, trigonal planar means a flat triangle. So, where are the corners of the triangle? Well, here's one corner of the triangle, and these two hydrogens are the other two corners of the triangle. So this gives us a trigonal planar arrangement. Now, if I was actually going to draw this completely realistically uh, around this carbon, I would actually draw it like this. Remember that a wedge means a bond that's coming towards you, out of the page, and a dash means a bond that's going away from you, into the page. Well, if I was going to be realistic, I would only show the hydrogen that's coming towards you. Now, there is another hydrogen, but in real life, you wouldn't be able to see it because it's directly behind this hydrogen. The second hydrogen on this carbon is directly behind this hydrogen. So if we were being realistic, you wouldn't actually be able to see that hydrogen. Well then, of course, we, we want to draw both of the hydrogens. So the convention is in OCHEM that even when one thing is blocking the other thing, we still draw them slightly askew so that we can see that there's really two hydrogens on this carbon. But please remember that this hydrogen is actually directly behind this hydrogen over here because it's on a dash, it's pointing away from you. So in real life, you wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, and when you, when you think about that, you can see 
that the three corners of the triangle really all are in the same plane. So again, this hydrogen is in the same plane as this carbon. And if we were going to draw this realistically, this hydrogen would also be in the same plane as the hydrogen. Uh, we've drawn it a little bit below the plane just so that it doesn't get blocked by this hydrogen over here. And the same goes over here. If we were going to be realistic, I would only show the hydrogen on the wedge um, because it's actually in the same plane as this hydrogen here. But instead, we've drawn them slightly askew. Now, what types of bonds have I shown so far? Well, I've shown all the sigma bonds. Sigma bond, sigma bond, and here's a sigma bond. What orbitals are the carbons using for the sigma bonds? Well, they're going to use their sp2 orbitals for the sigma bonds. So, for example, this sigma bond is formed from the overlap between this sp2 orbital and this sp2 orbital over here. We know that uh, when something is sp2 hybridized, it has three sp2 orbitals, and our drawing is consistent with that. For this carbon, we've shown three sp2 orbitals, and for this carbon, we've also shown three sp2 orbitals. By the way, uh, what type of orbital is the hydrogen using? Uh, well, you should remember that hydrogen is in the S block, so the hydrogen uh, is actually just going to be using an S orbital. That's not really too important for our discussion here, but I mentioned it for completeness. These sigma bonds are formed from a head. Uh, these sigma bonds are formed from an overlap between this sp2 orbital and this s orbital, or this sp2 orbital and this s orbital. Okay. Um, now, I haven't actually drawn the sp2 orbitals. Of course, sp2 orbitals are not straight lines. They um, actually look more like this. Uh, but uh, in order to make the picture clearer, I'm not actually drawing the sp2 orbitals. I'm just labeling where the sp2 orbitals are. Now, does this carbon have any other orbitals that I haven't mentioned yet? Well, absolutely. We know that when an atom is sp2 hybridized, that means that it has three sp2 orbitals and that it also has one p orbital. Well, I am going to draw that p orbital. So where and how should I draw that p orbital? Well, I should draw the p orbital perpendicular to all the other orbitals. So here's the p orbital on this carbon, and here's the p orbital on this carbon. Remember that p orbitals have two equal sized lobes. So this p orbital has one lobe up here and one lobe down here. Remember that these lobes are both part of the same p orbital. So even though I've drawn two lobes, they only represent one p orbital. And there's one p orbital on this carbon as well. There's one p orbital with two lobes, one on top and one on the bottom. I hope you can see that these p orbitals are drawn perpendicular to all the sp2 orbitals. For example, this sp2 orbital here is going straight in the plane of the page, and this p orbital is perpendicular to it. Um, and the p, uh, these p orbitals are also going to be perpendicular to these two bonds over here. Remember that the hydrogen, the hydrogen, and the carbon are forming a flat triangle, trigonal planar. All the atoms that are connected to this are forming a flat triangle, and the p orbitals are going to be perpendicular to that. You might imagine that p stands for perpendicular, because the p orbitals on an atom are always perpendicular to all the hybridized orbitals. Um, and a p orbital on an atom is also always perpendicular to any other p orbitals that there might be. So I don't think this is really why they're called p orbitals. But as a mnemonic, we might imagine that P stands for perpendicular. This P orbital is perpendicular to all the other hybridized orbitals on this carbon. And if there were any other P orbitals on this carbon, then this P orbital would be perpendicular to that too. Well, now let's assign our electrons. Remember that this here is our sigma bond. And we have two electrons in that sigma bond. Um, and what about the pi bond? Well, the pi bond is formed from the side-to-side -side overlap of these two P orbitals. We know that there's two electrons in the pi bond, and we might imagine that one of the electrons is from this p orbital, and one of the electrons is from this p orbital over, over here. 
And then we can draw dots to show the bonding interaction between the side-to-side -side overlap of those two p orbitals. Even though I've shown this electron as in this lobe, remember that it's really spread over both lobes. And this electron is spread over both lobes. So there's also a bonding interaction between the bottom lobes down here. So the overlap between these sp2 orbitals forms the sigma bond. And the overlap between these two p orbitals forms the pi bond. 